What's going on, everybody? Michael Silva here. Hope you're all having an excellent day and had an excellent weekend and Thanksgiving. I took a little bit of time off and I'm back now. We're looking at a Goldman Sachs chart. Yes, it's a rolling one month return of the S&P 500. Now they mentioned that it's not uncommon after a performance like this to typically see a three to 4% pullback in the SPX. So we're gonna map out some of those key levels in today's show. I'm also gonna give you a look into many other charts, other equities that have been setting up, things that I've been kind of noticing play. We're gonna talk about that all and more on today's Stock Market Brief Show where we navigate the financial markets through the lens of technical and intermarket analysis. Let's go ahead and get into today's show. Oh boy, oh boy. Feels good to be back. I tell you what. We got an interesting chart here. This is macro hedge funds exposure to US equities versus the S&P 500 where you have the S&P 500 up here and you have the equity exposure from macro hedge funds way down here. So what does that chart tell you? That tells us that macro is rather bearish and they're missing out on a large run. This could mean a couple of things. It could mean that they're right, or it could mean that they will potentially chase this up into year end, helping out that Santa Claus rally. We did discuss that the S&P 500 rolling one month price return over here. After seeing a typically good month like this, you can see now they mentioned that its performance is not indicative of future returns, but it's not uncommon to see a three to 4% pullback. Goldman Sachs also showed a SPX one month 3% out of the money put which is costing currently the lowest level in five years, 34 basis points. We did have a lot of Fed speak today. Fed Waller, he raised the probability of a rate cut by spring if inflation keeps slowing. And the two-year government bond, you can see here, responded with fury. He saw a lot of volatility during that talk, which actually caused the 10-year, two-year yield curve to uninvert itself a little bit more. We're at 39 basis points of inversion. And the U.S. 10-year, three-month curve went a little bit deeper into inversion, still over 100 basis points of inversion. The 10-year yield backed off today, minus 1.21%. I still find it that we're really kind of tightening into this wedge pattern. If this is a head and shoulders breakdown, which at the neckline was never violated, so it's still in play. We actually came back, back test, and moving down. It would put us a target at around 4 to 41 percent on the 10-year yield as it's still pointing down. You can see the TLT still continues to push up and up and up, and we're pulling into the declining 100-day moving average. So it's a, it's, a, it's a nice rally within an overall bear trend, but the shorter-term trends are turning up. You can see the 20-day turning up, and the 50-day is starting to try to flatten out here. So even if we get a pullback, boom, it could still represent further momentum to the upside, but just also pay attention to how price action is really coiling up here still in this rising wedge formation. Okay, let's continue on and look at the dollar. The dollar took a wallop today. It was down 4.44%, and we're, our, our RSI is moving into that oversold condition. I also applied a FIB retracement, and this is showing us between the 50% to 61.8% measuring from this swing low to this swing high, and this is known as the golden zone. So as the dollar was also kind of wedging. We we're keeping an eye on that too. This could have very well helped propel the move in various commodities. Now, one thing that we didn't see was with a falling yield and a falling dollar, what did the S&P 500 do? It actually didn't do much overall, including the NASDAQ 100 too, which I find a little interesting because we've seen it when the dollar moves up higher, it hits the S&P 500, but when the dollar falls, obviously helps the S&P 500. What assets did perform well? Take a look at gold. What a monster move there in the price of gold. RSI is getting to that overbought condition. Overall, that's a monster gap up. So now, as long as we hold this gap, even if it fills potentially, right, this could be a breakaway. At least it states right now, it is a breakaway gap out of this area of prior resistance. This is a big move in the price of gold in a single day, 2.38%. That's 47 points. Take a look at silver. Silver's also been up these last three trading days. It was up 2.52% today. And take a look over here. The miners saw a massive, massive move today too as well. Something that we've been tracking and watching is the correlation between silver and miners. So if you're watching silver and you like silver, but you want more juice, right? You can look at miners. And if you want less juice, you can potentially look at gold. There's somewhat of a strong correlation there too as well. Copper was also up on the day. Not nearly as much, but still a pretty decent day. 1% in the price of copper. 
I will note that we do have that divergence where copper's putting in a lower high, the S&P 500's putting in a higher high. We've called these divergence out multiple times and they played out to the downside. We've called them out to the upside too there as well. Take a look at some of the gamma strikes coming into tomorrow's trading session to pay attention to. 4,600 is going to be the big call wall to pay attention to. So this is going to be actually right around the upper weekly expected move towards the low end, the put wall down here at 4,400. And we have some other bigger ones at 4,575, 4,515. So if you want to screenshot this and mark those levels on your chart, feel more or screenshot it or just download the chart deck, which I always provide. Take a look at the SPY on the daily time frame. We're still bumping our head up into this prior resistance, okay? And we've been on a pretty extended move. If I actually zoom in, we've only had, you know, one, two, three, four red candles out of, you know, 20 odd something days. And a red candle would mean that it doesn't necessarily mean it was a down day, but what it means is we opened and we closed lower than the open price, which has not happened very frequently. Now, if we're talking about that 3% down pull, from this chart that is, you know, it's common to see, where would that take us in the S&P 500? Well, that would take us actually right to the month to date anchored VWAP, just right around there. That would be a 2.78% correction. And this is a nice inclining anchored VWAP for the month of November. We haven't even tested it yet. And that would be a pretty steep drop in the matter of two days. So perhaps going into the next trading month, if it's not tagged and we're getting a little bit of a pullback, watch the November anchored VWAP, the start, because that may act as a level of support on a pullback. So you don't need a, the reason why we're not, we're not calling for this, but the reason why I'm pointing out is because, you know, if we do get a strong move to the downside, you don't want to panic, right? It's still an overall, you know, uptrend. It's short term uptrend over here. Over here, you can see we had a series of lower highs, lower lows, and now we're starting to change that right up throughout this area where we have higher low, higher low, higher low. But in the short term, we had a, you know, a high, lower high, lower high, lower high, and now we're starting to break that. But what we haven't seen is a consolidation. We haven't seen consolidation really from this move. It's been kind of just a one-way ticket. So we gotta see what plays out there. If we take a look at the S&P 500, the SPX, I'm pointing out the daily expected move right here. This was today's. You can see price came into it and it rejected right from that level within cents. And we're kind of floating around that five-day moving average. If I update you on the chart, there's a couple interesting levels that I want to call out. So 4,600 is the massive call wall. That's right at the upper weekly expected move. Okay, if we start getting above tomorrow's daily expected move, this is, this, it, we could very well try to go for that by the, the week's end. So this is going to be that key target area for the bulls. That's, that's what they want as it stands right now. We're above that inclining five-day moving average. Now, if price starts breaking down, right, if we get below this little 45.50 gamma exposure level, watch for the lower daily expected move. And if we continue to move lower, the weekly expected move is a uh, lower weekly is at 45.20. And then check this out. The flip line is actually 4520 there too as well. So getting below this and breaking down from this level with strong volume would put us in a negative gamma environment. And if you remember us talking about this, where are we now? Well, we're above the flip line, okay? We're in positive gamma territory. And what does that mean? It means that dealers look to sell into strength and then buy into weakness. And you typically get a lower kind of drift up, lower volatility environment. But if we get below the flip line and we start to see real volume selling, right? They sell into selling. That's what happens in a negative environment. And then also they buy into buying. So you get much more violent price swings to be just aware of. So that's why it's, and the reason why I show this is because you got to understand if you're trading in today or if you're, you know, involved in like breakout trading, it's very important to know if you're in a positive gamma territory or a negative, because that is the condition of the market. And when the market conditions change, it's good to know when that takes place or what environment you're in, because it will really help identify why your strategy may or may not be working. Many of the breakout trades, which I'll share with you here, have been doing good because we're in this positive gamma territory. And it's just, you know, and we're, we were above a five day inclining moving average. When that changes, guess what? My, my strategy won't work nearly as well. So I have to adapt and my strategy being breakout trading and then also shorter term intraday trading there too as well. Now, if I look at the SPY on the 15 minute time frame. I zoom out. So this was the SPX. This is the SPY. It's the Spider ETF. I know a lot of people like this. If you want these levels, just go ahead and download the chart deck or screenshot it so you can see it. There's that 
anchored VWAP for the month to date, which is also in line, guess what? It's right around the gap fill, okay? So if I go back over to this, right, and we see that 3% drop, okay, that's actually right around a gap fill. So not only do we have a month-to-day anchored VWAP or November anchored VWAP, we have a gap fill. Those, that's all confluence for a potential support if we pull down into that area and if Goldman Sachs is correct, that it's typical to see that and you don't need to freak out. Now, we are in this rising channel here in the 15-minute time frame. You can see we touched, tagged, we tagged, dodged, duck, dive, and dodged over there, and we hit resistance. Sorry, that was a dodgeball reference. Now, if we start breaking down from this, that opens the door to that lower weekly expected move. If we start going into negative gamma territory, we might see a stronger move to this gap fill, and you just got to be aware of what's down here as far as confluence goes if you're looking for buying the specific dips, right? If we take a look at back month versus front month volatility, we showed this on the last chart. We're still above that 20%, which is typically where you get periods of consolidation and or pullbacks in the market. I found this divergence to be pretty important. If you look at, if you think of Dow theory, right, where you look at transports and then the Dow Jones industrial average, we've called out this many times throughout the past where if transports, they have a lower high. It's giving us kind of an indication of potentially a potential turn if there's a divergence within the industrial average. So you have the industrial average go higher, transports go lower moves into a you know a fall to the downside. However, on the flip to that, if the transports put in a higher low and you have you know a lower low or a matching low in the industrials, it could lead to a potential rally. And we've seen that countless times through here. The last one was over here, but um, this this big rally that we called out from this divergence. Well, right here, we're seeing a lower high and we're seeing some weakness, but the industrial average hasn't even moved. And I mean, keep in mind the industrial average, like the Dow Jones, like it's Apple and Microsoft really dragging this thing up. So if those two give us a little bit of hit, right, it would play out, you know, this divergence would play itself out. I'm still watching this divergence build in the Nisey McClellan oscillator. You can see this is a traditional calculation where we have a high, lower high, lower high, lower high, all, you know, all four lower highs and it's pointing down right in that over kind of bot territory and, and while that's happening, the price action is drifting higher. This reminds me a lot like this one right here, uh, where we wedged up very tightly. And was, everyone was saying the same thing, like, nope, nope, this is where the new bull market starts. This is where it goes. And we we're calling out the divergence. And then it obviously sold off. Not to say this is going to be the same thing. But then the, on the flip side of that, when we got bullish over here, we were talking about the bullish divergences. People weren't ready to hear that either. And we get ahead of it because, well, it can lead to a big rally. And you can see multiple times... It, it go watch these videos. We've, we've made them every single video. We talked about those specific divergences. Now, I want to hop into the IWM because this is what I'm finding a little interesting here is small caps and then high short interest stocks that are starting to squeeze. And this is typically where you get to your end of the rally is when you start to see these short squeezes take place. At least that's, you know, been my experience watching that take place, you know, for throughout 2022 bear market. And now we've seen that a lot of these rallies, these bear market rallies end with a lot of the short caps being squeezed out. Now, what I'm seeing right here is we're seeing a very tight consolidation with the price of IWM. If it breaks down, we have that month to date anchored view up there. If I take a look here at the 15 minute time frame, we're below the five day moving average and you can just see how we expanded and now we're contracting, we're coiling up. So the, an important level to watch if you're bullish on the IWM and small caps, I would say get above LWC, last week's closing price on the IWM. We started with a gap down, we moved up, we got you know clobbered again, we moved up, we got clobbered again, and then we're kind of drifting up higher. So I'd say we'd feel a lot more safer back above that 179 week today and closing above there. And that could at least open the door to come up to the upper weekly expected move if we're gonna get you know a bullish play. Now, if we start breaking down, start paying attention to that lower weekly expected move. Now, something that I've noticed is a lot of these high short interest stocks. So I'm gonna go through individual equities, individual names, just, you know, kind of give you an idea. Now, if you're in the Discord group, you know, I share, you know, a part of the watch list right here. I include what's known as a tight list. And the tight list is me really just digging through my entire watch list and finding all the names that are consolidating or coiling up. That's just one of the many benefits of this $9 a month, or you do it for an entire year and it's even cheaper. It ends up being like seven US dollars a month. And I give some trade ideas. I give the zone updates. I give a lot of stuff and I'm not going to go through all of it here. I even have all the tradey tick bots where you can type in the query. If you're like a, a day trader, there's some really good stuff there or finding even trade ideas by looking up. There's just, there's so much in this thing. I got to sit down and really like make an entire video that if you want to learn more about it, you know, you can come check it out. 
But if I go back, you know, there's a couple of trade ideas that I posted in here, and I just wanted to kind of follow up for those that are in there or that aren't, because I'm going to share a lot of new ideas too as well that I haven't even shared in the Discord yet. So if you take a look at Etsy, this was one that was coiling up. This was posted, uh, you know, when it was coiling up. What happened? Well, we started to see a little bit of a squeeze outside of it and some high volume breaks. So nothing too crazy over here. It was up, you know, 1.78% today, getting some follow through on the breakout. Now, when I look at some higher short interest names, take a look at W, okay? This is a Wayfair. This one thing was, you saw this move up. Okay, boom, we coiled up. Yeah, expansion leads to contraction. We're looking for a break above that 50. Well, we got that big old squeeze today. It was up 8% today. And this is where you typically want to make sure that you're like, you know, you know, make sure it's not a losing trade, right? After, after, after winning this way. Another one that I posted was RKT, a rocket finance or rocket companies incorporated. And this one's kind of breaking out of its little flag right now on some high volume. Uh, I'm looking for it to more, you know, reach into this. If we can reach there, get more of like a squeeze. This is, like I said, a higher interest name. Now I'm going to go into some other names that you can potentially, you know, look into trading or, or not, but just see how they play out and kind of study them. But all these high short interest names, we're seeing a lot of movement. So take a look here at CRISPR. This is a, you know, biotech name. This one, you know, we saw a big move here. We saw some strong volume on the way up. And then guess what? We pull back on lower volume. Okay. That's pretty bullish actually. And then we saw this big explosive move on what? On, on high volume picking up. Now, what are we seeing? Well, we're seeing a consolidation again on lower volume. So is this telling us like, are we, are we getting ready for a potential another push? If so, if we start breaking above the high, that opens the door back above or back to and around that 75, you know, this prior high right here. And then, you know, 70 where we're at, you know, up to 75, that's $5 per share if that trade plays out. And then being that it's a higher, you know, that it's coiling up, the, it offers better risk to reward. So if it starts breaking down, you just get out of the trade. If it breaks out, you can get in with a tight stop and so forth. So uh, there's a lot of these names that I'm going to be going over. Take a look at Lucid. Lucid was up 5% today on some big volume. And look at this thing coiling. It was all coiling up, getting very tight. It's after a big move. So maybe perhaps there's more upside to come tag that upper 50 day moving average. See where, you know, it opens tomorrow. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not going to bring up the GameStop chart, but that thing was up like 11% today. Look at U-Haul. U-Haul is another one right it's consolidating it's kind of going sideways perhaps if we get a little bit more of a short squeeze it comes up and tags that 200 day moving average frpt this is a little bit lower volume of a name but also we had this big gap up on earnings and what have we been doing we've been consolidating sideways right here so if this breaks out further maybe perhaps we go test 74 or maybe perhaps we you know get more shorts to cover to cause a squeeze and then you get momentum buyers and potentially pushes it up further where you get you know a pretty large outsized day, but having once again, this tight risk, you know, we break out potentially and you have a tight stop. It just offers up a better risk to reward. Yeah. Carvana. Carvana is also another high interest name. These are all high interest names. And this one, you know, squeezed from this tight wedge over here and we saw a big pop. Okay. A pullback. We saw a pop back up on some strong volume. And now just look at how the volume is drying up. This last day was a little bit of an uptick in volume and look at that thing coil up. So this thing to me looked like it's going to be ready to pop up to that 34, try to test that 50 day moving average that's currently declining or potentially even try to shoot up even higher. So that'd be one to watch. Well, what happens if it breaks down 30? Well, then you got to just put it on watch again, you know, just see what happens. But like I said, tight wrists. Tight, uh, tight risk for a potential good reward. BXMT, not really familiar with this one all too much, but you can just see here, price is flagging as well. It's just consolidating after a couple big moves. Okay, SGML, not, uh, it's a non first metals uh, name, so it's within the material space. It's just a high short interest, but this one's also kind of flagging as it's holding that 50 day moving average after a nice run up of volume. So we're going to see potentially, you know, let's go test that 200 day. But if we don't, what happens when well, we break down? Maybe go test the 20 day moving average. And then Restoration Hardware, another another one, right? That's been consolidating here sideways. So if the, if we're going to get some short squeezes or continuations, we've seen them, right? A move from a pretty extended area to the downside, we consolidated. We squeezed up higher. We're consolidating, so we're seeing a lot of this take place, and that could that could be a potentially bullish thing. But if it's not, like I said, the reason why I'm pointing this out is because the risk is small to potential reward being high. Look at Beyond Meat, another one, know, cruddy little name over here. It's just been consolidating sideways, getting very tight. Uh, you know, if there's gas in the tank in this one, right? Perhaps we bounce up to, you know, move up to the 50 day. Maybe we even get a stronger squeeze. But, you know, if we start breaking down from this tight consolidation, you know, just get out of it and wait to see if it sets up again. TWST, another biotech name. Not familiar with these. Biotechs are 
not not my cup of tea really, but you know, it is flagging over here too as well after a big volume day, right? After we moved up and saw also a nice consolidation. So just flagging out again. ENVX. So this is I I saved this one for last because I'm I'm a fan of trading this one on occasion. So this is an industrial supplier. And I know that there's been a lot of attention around this from um, I think his name is Mark Cajodes, a, a big proponent of this, but this one is a very high short interest name. And just take a look here, how tiny these candles are getting the bodies. And this tells me as it, as, as the 20 days pulling up and it's crossing over the 50, this thing is coiling up like crazy as it gets so tight, it offers a great risk to reward. So if we start breaking out, perhaps we get one of those days where we just pop up really quick to 12 bucks or $13 even. And then you have like a very, very small, small risk, right? You always want to, you never want to go YOLO a trade, but you know, say if you took, you know, a small position, a 1% position of your portfolio or 2%, 3%, what, I don't know what your percentage is. It's different for everybody. I, I, you know, I'm not going to go in here and take a 50% or 25% position. I'll take a, you know, five to 6% position. <laughs> that, that's, that's my typical, you know, typical style of trade. But if this thing starts, you know, breaking out and, you know, you're risking this much to potentially get this much or this much, I mean, that thing, that's a big risk to reward. Not to say, well, you know, to note, when the expansion happens, you could get whipsaws. So it's always important to just kind of see if we get a crack down and then it all of a sudden cracks out or if it cracks out and cracks down. Um, and then, you know, you get like this like violent shift. So you might have to be, you know, build the position or consistently watch it or, you know, map out, you know, say if you want a stronger or a bigger stop loss, not so tight to get whipped out, you know, adjust your position size to, to really help that out. But that's one that I'm watching here going into tomorrow. I'm, pro I'm probably going to post this one in the Discord after I record this. Going into the rest of the week, we got some data coming out, right? We got some GDP number stuff tomorrow. That's an hour before the market opens up. Thursday, we got the core PCE, personal income, personal spending. Friday, we got ISM numbers here and Fed Chair, Chair Powell. Today, we were just kind of, you know, Fed talk, Fed talk. We have some more Fed talk some more fed talk, you know, just, we got, we got, it's just a barrage worth of data. And that data, you know, is obviously impacts the markets. Like when fed talked today and we saw the bond market really respond as well as obviously there were some uh, auctions today too, as well. Taking a look at this week's earnings. Also pin duo duo, I reported today, saw some nice movement of that. That one's been on my watch list for a while. Going into tomorrow, we have foot locker dollar tree all before the market opens up another, uh, Another one, this is a Chinese equity, Pinduoduo is, and I believe Billy Billy is as well. We have Salesforce after the close and Snowflake. We have Kroger before the market open there too as well. So nothing too crazy, nothing market moving in my opinion, but some big names nonetheless to keep an eye on. That's all I got for you on today's show, everybody. Hope it helped out. I'll see you back on the next one.